Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of the Ace Bike Media Podcast. Our guest today is Pat Samaji. He's an 11 time national motorcycle trials champion, a professional mountain biker, a YouTuber, an RC car enthusiast, a traveler, a semi finalist on America's Got Talent, and just about everything else you wish you could do, doer. We have a great conversation with Pat covering most of Endeavor's past, present, and future. And we really hope you enjoy this podcast as much as we did. The East Bike Media Podcast. Pat, thanks for coming on the East Bike Media Podcast. Thanks for having me. Excited to be on it, and uh, it's cool that you guys are local to my area and doing something in the bike industry. So glad to be a part of it. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I actually asked you to do this podcast yesterday, but you reminded me that Supercross was on. <laughs> right, on. All right. Yeah, priorities. I actually completely forgot because Supercross is a Wednesday night thing now. Um, what did you think of the race last night, and who are you going for in the championship? Uh, I I really call it one. It's like watching. I, a lot of it was a good race. That's what I'm all about. A little bit of a bummer to see Roxton not be able to finish these last few, but uh, actually the last the Sunday race with Tomac and Webb was really exciting. So as long as we get a little bit of that here and there, I mean, it's always worth watching, but that just adds that extra bit of excitement, so. I'm a, I'm a super fan of Supercross for sure. Yeah, I hear you. The racing's been so, so good. Especially now that Webb's back in it. Right, yeah, and, and healthy again after crashing. And, yeah, when, when Tomac's on, it's just like you can just watch him ride it by himself when he's feeling it, and it's just a yeah, pleasure to watch. But then you get Webb in there kind of being a little thin with it and makes it uh, yeah, pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty, yeah, and, uh, pretty impressive what they can do for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I had a question uh, right off the bat. Colin had been bugging me for a while, and I just wasn't watching um, your PNW components video, but I finally did watch it, and it's really good, man. Um, I was just wondering what it was like preparing and actually shooting that video. Thanks. Appreciate that. Glad you got to know it. Yeah, the, the PNW guys have been super cool to, to work with and stuff like that. That opportunity they gave me, it, it just worked out where I was traveling out to their area somewhat for trial nationals and then they brought well, I think I brought the idea, hey, can we uh, you know meet up and ride and they're like, well maybe we can get a little filming trip going. So that yeah, ended up meeting uh, in Black Rock, Oregon. So the terrain was kind of unlike anything I had ridden. So we went and scouted the day before and looking at all, all the stuff and I'm just seeing these big jumps and stuff. And I, I like hitting jumps but I I don't have a lot of jumps around here to progress on so I wasn't feeling too confident in even really making a good edit because it's like, man, this, this place does not suit my style at all. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, and we just took a little bit more time, took a rundown. It's like, okay, the jumps I did hit, they flowed really well and they were fun. And, and I knew, even though I was, I was on a fat bike and it's like a, a downhill park, they, they call it, they're just fine with downhill bikes only and that sort of thing. So I yeah, definitely been out of my element, but super fun to just find kind of my style with what I was, I was uh, given there to the, given my style for them trying to adapt, you know, the, the trial technical, somewhat different kind of tricks to it was a, a big challenge. But as soon as we kind of got some ideas and started filming, it just started flowing. And it was fun to have those guys about some ideas about so they, they have a lot of experience filming and, and riding with other style of riders. So to put my perspective on things, it kind of, yeah, kind of made us full take outside the box a bit and, that yeah, was really enjoyable, even though uh, the second day it rained quite a bit. So we got the wooden features down the first day, and then <laughs> yeah, got the got the stuff that didn't matter so much on the second day. But I yeah, was pretty pretty excited and happy about how that turned out. Definitely a cool one to always have to look back on and watch again. For sure. And I actually had one question on, or not even a question, but something I noticed like on your style because it was like very clear watching your riding like all the time to see like the trial influence. I saw a toboggan in there, and uh, <laughs> I was like, "No, you're not seats." So I'm not. I was that was doing me off a bit. <laughs> yeah, I figured I got it. If I want to do one trick, that one is just the most fun to do. But I got to say, it was a little bit weak on that spot because I like to try to turn the bars close to 90 as I can. But that one was such a fast jump, coming in with so much speed and fat tires. When you turn them in the air, going that fast, I just wasn't sure if it was going to, you know, pull the bike out from underneath me too much and being a wooden landing, it's like, God, uh, I'll do it, but it's, it's, at least it's not a straight air, but it's still, it should have been a little better. A little more tweaking. It looked really good, though. Yeah, it looked good. And I tell a lot of people, that's like one of the best edits I've seen in a while. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, they, they did a great job. I mean, some of them, 
we really had to kind of take both ideas. Like, I have a certain look on how I would film it, and they have their idea of how they would film it. And sometimes we'd meet in the middle, sometimes we'd go with mine, sometimes it go with theirs, and it, yeah, it worked out really well, and they, they did a great job. Yeah, so anyone who's listening to this, go check that video out. It's past PNW uh, Components Edit on YouTube. So, yeah, you mentioned your motorcycle trials. Um, you're an 11-time national trials champ on motorcycles. I have to throw that in there. But I did see you have a full-size moto now, and you did a hardened barrel. Is that something you're going to do a little bit more of, or are you sticking to kind of the same trial schedule this year? Well, uh, there is all the yeah. schedule for anything this year. <laughs> right. Yeah, kind of with all the delays and everything else, that was the only event that I have had the opportunity to even think about riding. So I have always wanted to try one. I'd done some enduro cross in the past about 10 years ago, but hard enduro wasn't really a thing. I just wanted to give it a shot, see if it's something I want to get into. After doing one, really, I'm not sure yet. I, I like riding it. I have a lot of fun on the bike, but racing it is a completely different deal. And, I, yeah, it's just... Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure how much effort I want to put into it just yet, but I think I need to do another one and see how different it is and see if I can use what I learned from that one because I, I definitely took it as a big learning experience because it, it's a lot different than anything I've done. So the trial skills help, but there's a lot more to it than just getting through the, the hard stuff or, or having those trials uh, techniques down. But yeah, it, was, it was cool to at least do one, and, and I hope to do it at least one more. I didn't – was that a mutter? It, it rained, but it wasn't. So my motor is slick and soft, but definitely not like deep, nasty mud. So it was, it was actually, it was pretty good. If, if it hadn't re- had rained, it would have been a little bit on the, on the easy side on some of it, but the rain made it just like almost perfect for the difficulty. Okay, cool. You good? You good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah. on there. <laughs> you, you like dropped it and then, then you throw it at the same, <laughs> at the same time. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all good. I um I met your brother a little bit before you, but when we met, it was kind of right around the time you were doing America you Got Talent. Uh, can you talk about like what that experience was like? That was that was wild for sure. Definitely out of once once again, probably about as far out of that my element as you could imagine. Because I'm you know I'm living on a farm in Wisconsin. I like to be in the woods by myself and ride bikes for the most part. At least at that point in my life, I was. And really not, not outspoken at all where my brother Phil, he's, he's all about that and a really great showman. And it was really more of his idea and, and his dream in a way. And I was just kind of along for the ride. So it was definitely really cool to be on TV and to get that kind of exposure for, for trials and that sort of thing. But I got to say, dealing with the producers and all that, on this that back into things that you don't see, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it was, yeah. it was pretty frustrating and we were ready to move on. We were ready to go home more than we were ready to move on it once we did make it to the final stages because it's just, yeah, they, they don't understand what a, a motorcycle needs and we didn't have anything to practice, so we're just sitting there all week waiting for the for the set to get built where all, all the singers and dancers are able to practice their routine. We're just sitting in a tent and couldn't leave. And, and we actually got in trouble once because it's like we had nothing to do. We're sitting in a tent all day. It's like, forget this. We need this. We need to go somewhere. And we just want to walk around and they're, calling us 50 times, get back, get back, get back. We might need you for an emergency interview. So, yeah, just some little things that made it uh, frustrating at the time, but kind of funny now to look back on and, and laugh about. And then we still have, you know, that, that experience of being on TV is something that not a lot of people get to promote the sport that way is, was uh, really cool for us to be able to do. Did, did that, like, help you guys with, with like, promoting your shows and getting further opportunities? Or- yeah, for sure. The uh, year after that, we had a full 12 stop tour of the progressive international motorcycle shows all around the country that we did. So that was like the, the big, well, didn't end up being as much of a payday as we expected with a bunch of vehicle issues and everything. Of course, traveling on the road with four younger guys trying to cut corners and that sort of thing didn't quite work out for us, but we did get a lot of shows because of it. And you know, once in a while, it's like, oh yeah, I saw you guys on America's Got Talent. We want you to come to our event. And, yeah, so it definitely paid off for sure. So right, that's the glad we did it. And glad I hung on there and, and tried to help my brother out at the time. <laughs> so you just got a, a deal with Ibis. And from what I understand, or at least that I'm aware of, you're like the only guy who has two bike frame manufacturer sponsors. How did that deal work out? <laughs> yeah, it is, it's different for sure. But luckily, 
I just did not make a fat tire bike, and fat bikes <laughs> only make fat tire bikes, so they're both really cool about having me ride both and promote both, so I'm in a, a weird situation there, but a, a lucky one, because I, I do really like fat bikes. They're kind of like what got me, what gave me reason to start posting videos on mountain bikes and all that, so it's really where I came from in a way on the mountain bike side of things, and yeah, fat back has been awesome to be since uh, 2015, I believe, is when we started together, and when I just feel first, the, the talks first started, one of the first questions I had for him was, can I still ride for Pratt back? Because that's the, you know, they, that, that program means a lot to me, and I, I really enjoy riding the bikes, not just in the snow, but all year round, so yeah, that was kind of, uh, was a big deal for me, and it, yeah, it gets a little bit tricky trying to promote both, but I just yeah, I see myself as being very lucky to find two companies that it works for, so We'll see how good I can manage it throughout the year, but uh, yeah, I've been excited to do more on, on both ends. Yeah. Um, so, how did how, did you contact them, or did, did someone from IBIS kind of come after you? Well, the cool part about it was that I didn't contact them. I was I was actually just riding with a friend in Kentucky, and he invited a friend along. Okay, he's from that area, and he's he's a uh, IBIS dealer, and we just were riding, and he was watching me ride, and talking about what bike I'm on and, and that sort of thing. And then, yeah, one thing led to another. He's like, hey, we, well, I got to get you in contact with IBIS and see if they want to hook you up and see if they can work something out. And, yeah, they just, we just started talking there, and he, he introduced me to the right people there, and they were all about it. They actually they saw the PNW video as well, and they're like, yeah, we, we like this guy's style. We want to help him out if we can. And luckily it, it worked out, and it, it was actually quite a long time from the, when we started talking because there was some other stuff in the works too that I wasn't sure about and it just took forever to kind of finalize things and, and get a bike going but it actually worked out perfect because the Mojo 4 is kind of my, my style of, of bike for a full suspension bike it's really what I was after more so than the Ripmo or the Ripley so yeah it worked out with perfect perfect timing and I, I should mention uh, the guy I was riding with is Sean at N plus one bikes he's kind of the one that made the whole deal happen so I gotta thank him for that and he's really trying to yeah, use use me to help sell bikes through him. So the videos you'll see a lot of N plus one logos and, and mentions just because they'll they'll take care of people that are watching my videos and making sales because of it, and it, it helps me out a bit too. So that's kind of the goal is to sell bikes and, and promote the brand and yeah, have fun riding them. Yeah, I'm sure I just won't have a problem selling that new Mojo. It looks pretty sick, and I heard great things about the last one. Yeah, I actually when I was first looking at all the bikes they had, I'm like, can I it sounds funny. Like, they asked me what bike I'd be interested in. I'm like, well, you're not going to believe this, but probably the Mojo 3. And it was, like, the most outdated from uh, 2016, I believe. And they're like, well, don't tell anybody this, but we might have a new one coming. And it just all, all worked out for the timing. And it was really cool to have that bike before it was out. And it yeah, something kind of a special thing that not a lot of people get that opportunity either. So, unfortunately, unfortunately I hurt my foot really bad, like, three days before I got the bike and I couldn't <laughs> ride it and I'm trying to plan videos and like build stuff for the bike to ride. And I haven't even been able to ride it yet. And I'm like, well, I think maybe this will work. Maybe that'll work. And it was yeah, pretty frustrating. I was, I was riding in a walking boot and <laughs> riding when I shouldn't be. Cause I just, <laughs> I had to try it. I mean, it looked like so much fun. It's like, I got to see what the thing feels like and definitely jump the gun on it. But at least now I'm able to ride more normal and, and take some impacts and really get a feel for what I can do on it. Yeah. I uh, I don't know. If you probably know this by now, Pat, but I I don't live in Wisconsin anymore. But um, this year I happened to be up there for a weekend, and it happened to be the weekend you did the race at Alpine. I, I'm going to be delicate with this question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't I didn't bring my bike, so you don't have to apologize to me. I was just shooting photos, but it. I, it was obviously a lot bigger than you expected. So, I mean, can you talk about um, just like things that went into that event and do you plan on doing that again? So the whole idea behind it was the year before that, Jameson, the guy that manages the hill and built the mountain bike trail and takes care of the hill in winter as well, came with up to the idea to just do a video on the, the, the park they had there because it was such a cool build and, and I, yeah, I was super excited to ride my bike on a ski hill and the, the obstacles they had were just, it was like a downhill skate park basically. So super fun just to do that video. And then he's like, oh yeah, I've always thought about doing like a, a downhill mountain bike race in the snow, build a course for it. And, and when he brought up that idea, I just kind of kept 
Hermione and then like, hey, yeah, yeah, we should do that. We should do that. And then finally the, the date happened where it worked out where I was home for long enough to kind of help him build and, and throw it and set it up and, and all that. But when we first came to the idea before just deciding when to do it or anything, he was like, yeah, I think if we get, you know, 30, 40 riders, that would be a great turnout and it'd be a good start. And I, I would, I think we would expect that. And once I posted the, the video and did, did the event, I just see the, the numbers on Facebook just climb and climb and climb. Like, I, I don't know what to do. Like we, the, the plan we had, I'm just looking, like trying to, uh, you know, do some math and figure out how long it's going to take to get all these guys through. And it's like, they're, it's not going to work. What are we going to do? And yeah, we just were unprepared. And it's also hard to, to, to kind of, uh, you know, expect that many people to actually show up just because they click, yeah, they're going doesn't mean they really will and with, with why they were coming in we actually yeah that was a whole other part of it was the, the blizzard we had during the whole thing so yeah it was uh it, it went to about as bad as it could go but it actually also was awesome because the people that you know it's not that people were, were waiting around and people did get, get frustrated which i don't understand but the people that did actually do the run even though the course was completely trashed they seemed to be having a great time and even though they're crashing and struggling just to get down the hill they were all smiling and and loving it and i just try to remember if it was me and i just showed up and, and did one run i would be pumped like that such a cool experience to ride your bike on a ski hill because i think every pretty much everybody that lives in the north north side of the, the country that gets snow uh and ride bi- rides bikes they're gonna have that in their mind at some point that they want to do that so we do hope to do another one just gonna change a lot of things to try to get everybody a lot more time on their bikes and a lot less time waiting in the cold. So once again, I'm, I'm sorry to everybody. <laughs> no, I, I did one race run and I had a blast. It was super good to fun. Hear. Good to hear. It was a good <laughs> event. <laughs> the course was really awesome. I'm glad I got in line quick because I was like, I can't believe these people are running to get in line. Like the right. track's going to be blown out. Yeah. But, um, the run I did before, like before it was even light out because we got there early enough to set up and before it started snowing, it was, it was so much fun. It just, it, nobody really got to experience the true conditions when it's, you know, kind of hard base with a nice groom that's kind of consistent and you can yeah. push into, but you're not just wash out. It's just, it's like a downhill BMX track in your dreams pretty much. It was, yeah, it was really fun. So I really hope more people can, can get that experience. You know, Andy, it sounds like Pat needs to do mega avalanche with us next year. <laughs> Have you have you looked into that, Pat? <laughs> I've, I've watched it. I haven't looked into it or really considered actually doing it. But you should really I, consider it because I'm I'm, I'm, I'm walking the stop, By the way, I will never yeah. shut up. I'm going to do it. <laughs> well, that that might help me then. That's somebody else that wants to. Do it. But if it's just one guy that wants to do it, it, it can be it can be a big challenge. But yeah, the dog, so, so I'm, sweet for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm 100 percent all in. Like I'm already like planning it out in my head. <laughs> Right now, we need, we need to talk sometime. Then. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sorry, I'm unprepared right now. We'll have to edit this part. Because <laughs> I just got off track. I was like, oh, he wants to ride in the snow so bad. I got an idea for him. Um, so, I mean, I guess this question kind of is related. Um, are there any mountain bike events that you plan on doing this year or you look forward to doing in the future now that you're sponsored by two companies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to promote them, right? Uh, yeah. I really, I hope to. I, I'd really like to do a, a true enduro at some point. It just with the schedules right now, everything's up in the air. There is some talk of doing some some smaller events at Alpine, somewhat soon. I hope. Once again, I might have to, you know, give James some little push here and there to, to get things going, and hopefully oh. we, can, we can start. Even if it's just a, a real small group or something, just to have some fun, but also get some some as many people as we can get together safely or however you want to you want to put it. Just. Yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun to have something with some competition involved. And even if it's just more for a video or something, it would be a good time. So I'll definitely uh, let you know if anything comes up. And, and I, I'm hoping for the best. I've got some ideas. He's got some ideas. And uh, yeah, other than that, I, I hope some of the other Enduros, maybe up North Marquette or something like that, might work out. But until the until any events actually happen and until we have our trial series, I can't say for sure at this point. But I can hope. Yeah, I hear you. Obviously, we can't do too much uh, traveling right now based on the same discussion, but you clearly had a chance to ride a lot of places around the world. What's your favorite place that you've been to um, to ride or, or otherwise? 
That's a good question. I have been, luckily enough, I've been to a lot of places, all thanks to motorcycle trials. I, I travel a lot for the nationals and for practice in the winter and always bring my mountain bike with me and, and look for spots along the way and around the areas that we're staying in. So been uh, out west and out east and yeah, quite a few places. There's still a lot, a lot of places I, I want to go, but I'd say, yeah, for me, one of the coolest is probably Moab just because the, I love rocks and there's rocks everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah, endless. So you can always challenge yourself on technical lines and that sort of thing. But I've also, I gotta say, I went to Iceland with the Fatback guys and that was one trip I'll never forget. Just the, the amount of varied terrain they have over there. We, I mean, pretty much every style of, of dirt and rock. And we, we started at a waterfall and, and, Ended in the city, but also went up to a glacier, uh, like a, a mountain with a glacier and an ice tunnel, and had a little an ice race, a time trial inside the ice tunnel. So, yeah, it's just like surreal almost to look back on that. But yeah, Moab and Sedona are kind of my my top two, somewhat go to. Like whenever I'm somewhat going in that region, it's like oh, I gotta gotta make my way there and, and stop by. And yeah, just I really like rocks, and those places have some great rocks. So. I hope to find some more, though. I want to start adventuring out. And even there's there's some places in Wisconsin I haven't been, and and there's yeah some that I have heard are, are really good, and, and others there's more out there to check out. So I'll be uh, hopefully continuing to travel and ride a lot more in the future. So um, I know you're hurt right now, but um, what does your normal training look like? Do you ride your bikes pretty much every day? I ride some kind of bike pretty much every day. Yeah, there's there's very few days that I won't do any kind of two-wheeled or one-wheeled activity and definitely mix it up between it just it depends what time of year it is if it's right before the national season i do a lot of you know trials practice a lot of sections and then a lot of uh, cross country riding to stay in shape or, or getting in better shape and then in off season maybe mix it up with a little bit more try to find some more jumps and stuff like that just to, to do something a little bit different and yeah, still do a little bit of bicycle travel, but I find that I can do enough of it on my fat bike or post suspension bike that I don't grab that bike as much. So yeah, there's definitely the, the two bikes I'm going to all the time now, and I I am uh, healed up enough to ride normally again. So that's been really nice to have some stability and strength coming back. But and it it took a lot out of me to to be down for a few weeks. It just it's amazing how much fitness and strength and and really riding skill you lose just the consistency isn't there and the, the precision isn't, isn't there and all that so it's been it was a bit frustrating it's like yes i can ride again and i tried to just jump back into right what i was doing before and that wasn't wasn't happening so it took a little bit of time but yeah i, I like to mix it up a lot and yeah i unicycle as well and and try to do some sounds funny but rc cars are a big part of my uh, training to, to keep me having fun and and I, I call it the cross training as well because you, you know you gotta have that uh, dexterity in your fingers, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, how did you get hurt? Riding trials, I just uh, okay. put my foot down and my rear tire kicked off a rock and the skid plate, like the bike kicked up and the skid plate landed directly on top of my foot. So pretty much like setting your foot on a stand and just dropping a motorcycle, the weight of a motorcycle right on your on your foot. So it, yeah, it was black and blue for a few weeks and that was. I had it in a walking boot and I was uh, on crutches a little bit, but then I also had a, a head new ibis sitting there and it's just like, uh, it feels kind of somewhat okay right now, today, this minute. So then I'd go ride and then it, yeah, I'd be paying that, paying for it for a while. So I definitely would probably be 100% by now, but I kept, uh, yeah, riding a little bit too much here and there and, and then got on the enduro bike a little early too because the, the moto boot was stiff enough where it's like, okay, it feels pretty good as long as I don't dab it but then you dab it once or you land a little weird once oh yeah yeah you're there's another week so yeah yep. definitely yeah i'm not good at being hurt i guess yeah i hear you um and what were you doing putting your foot down i mean i know a little bit about <laughs> trials but i didn't think putting your foot down was a thing <laughs> well i i did have you know somewhat of an excuse I, where i was taking off of was actually ice at the time so i spun a uh, tire lost my balance took a dab and it was a big kind of a not a cliff, but it, an edge of a rock. So I okay. just put my foot down and stop. I had to continue forward and kind of reach for the dab, and that kept the bike uh, going in that direction. And, yeah, the trials boots are not that protective, so they're not really designed to take it like that. And, yeah, it, it got me. It gets you once in a while, but it could have been worse, I guess. Yeah. It happened at a good time, I suppose. Well, I mean, there's not a whole I mean, lot of yeah. competition going on. Right. It, but it, when when it happened, everything was still scheduled to start the next month, so. 
I, uh, I would have I would have been able to do it, but I would have just really had to well stay up by close to them and endure bike a little bit longer and had a heel and it would have been just like going right into nationals. So uh, when things did get pushed back, it, it took some stress away because it's like I'm just looking at my foot and icing it and looking at the calendar and just like, oh, this is this is not good. And then I also had a couple of videos, but I just uh, launch date got pushed back obviously because of everything else. But I'm like, okay, I got to get like five videos I have in mind, some trials ones too. I got to get ready for the season and I can't ride. And I was just getting ready to do all my traveling to, to prepare for the season. So yeah, when that happened, I was, I was really bummed out, but it actually having the, having the idea to show up and have some, like some, something to, to reach for and something to plan for. And then I, I built some new obstacles and some lines to try out in my woods. So it was keeping me busy and occupied and keeping my mind on something different. So that was, that was nice to have that for sure. I've been watching videos of you for like a really long time, like even before we met. And, um, it's, it's been cool to see like the riding that you do with your family, like your whole family seems to be like good at riding things that are two wheels and things that are four wheels even. But, um, what's happened? Like, like how does that influence you? How often do you ride with your family? That kind of stuff. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's obviously where it began. My, parents actually met at a motocross track my my grandpa and my mom's side uh, owned a motorcycle dealership and my dad and his brother did a lot of riding on the farm that we we live at now so it's just been in the family forever my dad introduced us all all to bikes right at an early age i started in bmx and then uh, a little bit of mountain biking but once i found trials i was just hooked on that and focused on that for a long time but it's just yeah i had to have my my dad's influence and then my older brothers as well they're a few enough years older than me that they were they could do a lot more so i would always look up to them and try to catch up try to bridge that gap and see what they were doing basically so that gave me a lot of motivation and yeah they're they're still riding today we you know don't ride together all the time but actually this, this afternoon i rode with my brother and and his his kids also uh, i have a yeah, niece and a nephew that are are uh, six and ten i believe and uh, they're just you know, you know riding around a bit and riding we have some cross-country trails here on the farm and it's, yeah, it's good to see that passing on to the next generation once again because my dad introduced us and now my brother's getting his kids into it and yeah, it's just it's, and now my my wife is pretty into it as well. So to be able to ride with pretty much everywhere I, I go down the street, any family member, we can we can find something to ride. My my mom and dad so ride quite a bit and yeah, it's just a good way of, of transportation around the farm if nothing else. But yeah, it just depends on uh, what they want to do, I guess. But it's yeah, it's in the blood for sure. Yeah. Hey, speaking of where you live, um, have you ever seen the Beast of Bray Road? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think my mom has. She, at least she was in the news saying that she did. And yeah, really, what's, yeah, what's, what's <laughs> funny is is uh, right down the street now, somebody built a like carved a statue out of a big tree stump in the form of a beast, and it's yeah, they've got a little fence around it, and he's like wanting to take donations to take a picture with it and that sort of thing. And, oh man, yeah, it's, that's it's, funny. It's, it's pretty, pretty funny. Yeah. There's, uh, there's actually one person when I was in high school that didn't want to come over to my house because I lived on Bray Road. It's like, Oh, I'm afraid of the beast. And that coming. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you actually lived on Bray Road. Yeah. That's it, crazy. The, the third scariest place to live in the country at one point. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And for those listening, uh, we're talking about like an eight foot tall werewolf urban legend i actually there was a news article where somebody had claimed to see the beast in my my front yard in east troy and then like a few months later my dog gave birth and i'm actually wearing the shirt right now oh, we yeah. named my dog bray because we're like <laughs> her father is the beast <laughs> <laughs> nice so you moved away but you still got a little piece of the midwest and you're good <laughs> yeah i get back up there quite a bit so Coming up there in a couple of weeks, so we should all ride together. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So there's good spots around it. It is, you know, really flat around here, but we've got some good options now. Alpine is definitely my favorite, and they're actually not sure if anybody's supposed to know this yet, but they're building a new trail right now that should be done soon and pretty cool. So, yeah, definitely there's some revamping going on out there. We'll have to meet up and do some riding. Yeah, yeah I've been getting Snapchats, and it looks pretty cool. Sweet. Um, yeah, so we've taken up a lot of your time. I know this went on a little bit longer, but thanks for coming on. And is there anyone you want to thank, give a shout out to? Well, I kind of already did, but again, sat back and, uh, I, this is 
definitely cool to have that, that support on both sides of every tire I want to be riding, but then also P&W components. Those guys have been cool to work with, and I hope to do another video with them someday for sure. That, that would be nice. And also uh, Manitou and Hayes, Manitou Suspension and Hayes Brakes. They're local to me in Milwaukee, so about an hour away. It's cool to be able to go to the warehouse and kind of I'm, I'm after a different field and, and a different setup than most people with the trial stuff. It's uh, yeah, so it's to be able to have that and knowledge they can really help me out on on adjusting things and and making it feel how I want. So that, that's definitely also to have and also uh, grip studs keeps me hooked up in the winter. So thanks to them for and I got, they got the screw in studs for the fat tires. So yeah, pretty much if you're interested in any of the brands that I do ride and I wouldn't ride them if I didn't like them, um, I can probably help you get you know help you out with a deal or, or uh, answer some questions. So don't hesitate to reach out and talk to me about bikes because that's uh, I love to ride them and I, I'm a pretty quiet guy but I, I like to talk about them too. <laughs> Where can people get a hold of you and uh, is there anything specific you want people to follow you guys on? Your YouTube's pretty pretty big. Yeah, I'd say YouTube I'm going to gonna try to keep that a little more consistently consistent this year and, and hopefully a lot more mountain bike stuff on my channel there so it's just Pat Slodgy is the YouTube channel and yeah, I have uh, Instagram and Facebook as well so um, I, sometimes I miss messages <laughs> it's, it's hard. I, I don't like to spend too much time on my phone and computer if I don't have to so sorry if I miss you but I, I will try to do a little bit better about that and I really try to keep up with seeing the YouTube comments or even if you say hey I messaged you on, on this if it's on YouTube I'll probably see it before I see the rest of them so yeah hopefully, hopefully I, I just want to see more people on bikes and if, if what I'm doing helps then, then I'm doing the right thing yeah for sure well thanks so much Pat we really appreciate it yeah, no thanks, problem. Pat. thanks for having me and good yep. job keep up the good work <laughs>